Let's practice categorizing some cash flows. So what you want to do is pause the video as I'm going through this to see if you can categorize each one of these activities as an operating activity, investing activity, or financing activity on the cash flow statement. So sales on credit, is that an operating activity, investing activity, or a financing activity on the cash flow statement? Well, this is kind of a trick. Technically, you'd want to account for the sales on credit to make sure that you didn't include them on the cash flow statement. So they're not really a cash flow item, um, but they would be factored into your analysis of what's going on credit and what would we want to take out of our uh, our sales account that is reported uh, if we were doing the indirect method. So no cash flow, but if you bid, set an operating activity, at least you're you're not right because you forgot that no cash is involved and all we care about is cash, but at least you're close because the category uh, is operating if it was sales and cash. Uh, so there's no cash flow with it, but we do have to factor that in to make sure that's not in the cash flow statement that we don't have those kind of sales on account factoring into our operating cash flow because it's not cash. Now, cash sales uh, kind of gives away the next one. Cash sales, where does that go? Operating activity, that's right. Now, equipment sales. So you sell your equipment that's, uh, you, you know, you're in the manufacturing equipment, you make widgets, and this is something from your factory, you sell that. What would that be? Operating, investing, or financing? It is an investing activity. Now, it's important. A lot of times students get mixed up and they think uh, of these flows one directionally, either just buying equipment, but they forget about selling equipment. They think about buying stock or uh, 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 selling a bond, and they forget that, that uh, uh, the company can can sell and buy any of these things. So whether they're buying or selling equipment, it's an investing cash flow. It doesn't change between categories. So it's an investing cash flow. Depreciation, uh, which uh, which one is operating, investing, and financing? It's another trick. It's not operating, investing, or financing. There's no cash flow with depreciation. So you'd want to make make sure you pulled that out. You'd clean that out of your net income and and, and brought it out. So there's no cash flow and depreciation, and so you have to get it. You have to pull it out of net income if you're doing the indirect method of creating a cash flow statement. Dividends paid. Your dividends paid. Your dividends paid are going to be a financing cash flow. Uh, these are dividends that are paid to shareholders. Cash, cash collections of accounts receivable. Those are going to be an operating cash flow. So uh, if you collect on prior sales, cash collections of accounts receivable, um, that's related to your core operations. Received inventory on account. Received inventory on account. Now, you have to make adjustments for the fact that you have inventory that you've sold. What's the factor of that on account? What did you pay for cash? And so don't get confused just because you're factoring these things into the analysis that you're doing on your operating cash flow doesn't mean it is a cash flow because if it's on account, there was no cash. So you have to factor that in to net out of your net income. I have other videos that talk about this netting effect relating, uh, related to the indirect method, but receiving inventory on account is no cash flow. There's no cash flow with it. So you'll have to net that out of your estimations uh, when you're looking at uh, you know, uh, periodic inventories uh, determine co to determine cost of goods sold. Paid off inventory uh, account payable. Now this would be an operating cash flow. All right, so you paid your inventory account that you had uh, you had some say, inventory that you purchased on account and you paid it off. Well, that's related to your operations. It's going to be operating cash flow. You sign a rental agreement, signing a rental agreement, operating, investing, or financing. Well, when you sign a rental agreement, you're really not, there's no cash involved in that. There's no cash uh, uh, going on. So uh, signing a rental agreement, no cash. Now, if it said that there was some deposit there, you might have some cash flow, but signing a rental agreement uh, uh, there's no cash flow in the, in the signature. So just the commitment uh, to do something does not mean have a cash flow item that you'd execute on. Okay, so when you pay rent, when you pay rent, that's going to be an operating cash flow. Operating cash flow is when you pay rent. If you lease, similarly like paying rent, it's going to be operating cash flow. So if you do uh, equipment lease, that'll be a, an operating cash flow. Stock sold to the market is going to be a financing cash flow. Stock repurchased from the public market, financing cash flow, and equipment sold, uh, investing cash flow. You're investing in equipment, land. So whether it's bought or sold equipment, it's going to be an investing cash flow. Equipment purchased, investing cash flow. Now, uh, interest payments. There was a big debate about interest payments when the regulators got together to figure out if it was a financing or operating activity. And the debate revolves around, well, 
there's always a certain amount of leverage that's out there. And so is paying interest an operating event because there's just interest that everybody's always paying on uh, in their business. So uh, revenue and expenses, uh, you know, are operating activities, interest expenses and operating, act, uh, it should be an operating activity because it's an expense. Um, uh, but financing activity, those arguing for the financing activity role of interest expense say that, well, debt is a financing activity and the cost associated with that activity should be tied to that in the same way kind of dividends are tied and a financing activity in that way. And so because of this big debate, there's a divide in how this is done. In the U.S., cash paid in interest is an operating expense, period. Uh, and under IFRS, cash paid in interest can be an operating or financing. It can be one or the other. So under IFRS, cash paid in interest can be operating or financing. And in the U.S., it can only be an operating expense. So these are the activities that you'll kind of want to have some familiarity with as far as knowing what buckets they go into, operating, investing, and financing activities, and understanding those words. Prior to this class, you might have heard the word financing activity or investing activity and thought, man, I know what these things are because I have invested in stocks or I've heard about the word finance and I've read a book. Uh, but those these words have definitional meanings in accounting. Investing activities for a business are things related to buying equipment, buying land, buying things that are long-term assets. Uh, and, and financing activities relates to raising capital for the business operations or paying capital to those that have raised it uh, or that have uh, that have pay, paid in with debt or equity uh, as a result of uh, paying them back. So uh, that is, those are the buckets, those are the categories, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.